see where you are. New leopard for me. Hopefully this will also be a new leopard for a lot of us because I don't think she's... She doesn't come onto our areas or places where we can see it all that often so she's a little bit hard to spot sometimes. Now, she is in all royalty <laughs> sleeping on top of the branches of the dead tree feeding on her kill. So Senzo, let me know when it works for you. I think this works here and it'll be a very nice frontal visual of her. Oh, look at that. Seems like we got here just at the right time. Oh, she's got a diker and I think she's trying to reposition it and move it somewhere else so she can carry on feeding on it. Ooh. There are a bit of a few branches in the way but hopefully we'll be able to get around them just a little bit later but let's just let her settle now that there's been a bit of movement all around and we'll be able to to go around and have another look at her but how amazing <laughs> hello new leopard very happy to meet you she is a stunning individual and looking very full i should say and she's actually she seems to be quite bigger although it could be the angle that she's in but i have a feeling she's slightly bigger look at those claws that just that power and she's doing exactly what Shadow was doing when we saw her the other day with the cub and the steamboat kill look how she's taking all of the hair uh, all of the hair out of the of the skin of the diker just to be able to get to the soft part to the skin and then be able to cut through there and get to do all the meat that because obviously that's what uh, that's what she's interested in and there went all the hair <laughs> falling down but if she's not careful she might even drop this kill because it seems like it's hanging just by a little bit of a thread, so to speak, and she's just holding it together all the way up there. Lucky for her, I don't see any hyenas around, so even if she drops the kill, she could just very well go down, fetch it, and then grab it and put it back up on the tree. It's a very long job trying to eat their prey. So if you imagine for a leopard, they spend endless hours trying to hunt. I mean, we've seen Hosanna trying to stalk and hunt for so many times and Shadow and Tandi and all of them and they do it for quite a while and they're not that successful. Their success rate is probably about maybe 40-50% if anything. And uh, once they do manage to get the animal down or to bring it down and hunt it, now she's actually fed on it, she's opened it and now she's taking it all the way up there but her job doesn't just finish there. Now she's going to carry on plucking the hair and trying to get to the meat so... <laughs> quite a long process for them to try and get all the meat and all the nutrients that they need to carry on surviving. So I think we, we just tend to think that it's the, the stock that is the longest part, but I think we don't give the, the treatment of the, or the preparation of the meal enough consideration. Just because they also, they spend a lot of time taking the hair out, taking the stomach out, trying to cut through the skin to get to the meaty parts. And it is getting a bit of a, it's a bit of a strong view, very raw. So if you are not entirely comfortable with what we are watching, please do look away. Um, this is the way our leopards survive, and it's this is why it's it's nature, and it's a very raw visual of what it is. And on the one hand, obviously we are very happy that she is able to feed, because, but unfortunately for everything that lives, something else dies. <laughs> That's very gloomy, Senzo. <laughs> maybe she's managed to position it a little bit better on the tree and it seems like she's got it safe up there. Cheryl, um, you are wondering how old this leopard is. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm sure a lot of viewers will be able to help us out using the hashtag Safari Life. But if I am not mistaken, she is a previous litter to Tamba. So I'm going to guess around two or three if she is actually the one that the, the, the litter previous to Tamba. Otherwise, I could potentially be very, very, very wrong. Um, but like I said, if anyone wants to help out and let us know, I am more than happy to learn about a new leopard. That obviously other people have been following for, for a while longer than what I have. And that is the beauty of this community that we have. It seems like she's still quite a... She's got a lot of the meat still left around there, especially in the hind quarters. Are you going to take it up? Whoop. Yeah, that's she's on a dead marula, 
so parts of the bark are falling down as she moves around so I think maybe that's why she's trying to move it just to make sure that she's got a bit of a better grip and the bark doesn't fall with her and the kill hmm. I'm gonna wait for this car to stop moving and maybe we'll try to get a bit of another look although if she raises her head it's quite nice because then we've got full on view of her exactly like this thank you very kind of you very clever leopard putting your kill all the way up there. So in areas where there's a lot of pressure from other predators, it's particularly um, hyenas, the leopards, or most of the leopards, although Shadow's a bit of a um, special case, they tend to put their kills on top of the trees because pretty, mu pretty much nothing else will get to them. So you see, <laughs> she's hiding actually quite well on a very dark day like today. If you look from a distance and the way her, the, the color of her skin and the kill that she's got there, it's pretty much impossible to know that she's actually here so luckily the guys managed to find her this morning and now we get to spend some time with her in the evening Woohoo! <laughs> beautiful take care you're wondering if leopards open the skin of their prey using their claws or their skin well, in this case, if you're wondering, because you, we saw that she had her paws on top, that uh, the paws are mainly just to grip to make sure that the kill doesn't fall. But to open or to cut through the skin, they actually use their teeth, particularly the back teeth, because the way that the teeth of a of a leopard are put in their mouth is the same as a domestic cat or a dog, and it, it's actually that whole uh, position. And it's called carnation shear, and it allows. The, the leopard to cut through the skin almost as if its teeth were scissors. So that's why you see that the hell tilts down on the side and she's using the molars at the back to just cut open that skin and be able to get through the meat. So they they use their mouth rather than their than their claws to try and open it up. Raisa, James and Hini, you all say that Kuchava is three years old. Woohoo, so I wasn't too far off in my, uh, my calculations. So she is still a very young leopard and this would be Tamba's older sister, uh, sister. And Tamba is a young male leopard that we also get to see in our traverse area. Uh, and we've actually been seeing it a lot with their mother, Tandi. Now, she's still, like we said, very, very young still for, <laughs> for a leopard and hopefully she'll have a very long life ahead of her. And I look forward to maybe spending some more time with her. She's been found on Chitu a few times and it almost seems like she started pushing a little bit more onto this area while Tandi has been pushing a little bit more into, into Juma now that Karula has been gone. So there, I think that there's going to be a little bit of a shift in leopard's territory and hopefully um, it'll be a good one in the sense that we'll be able to include maybe some other leopards that we don't see as often. <coughs> Seems like it's been a fantastic cat day today. Don't, isn't, is today Wednesday? Don't they call today Wildlife Wednesday? <laughs> I think today has been a proper day. But while we try to perhaps find a new angle to see if maybe we can see her a little bit better, we're also gonna go back to Jamie who's still hanging around with lions, but hanging around with lions in the dark. It does look like something from another world, doesn't it? When you have all of these creatures with the infrared light, it's to me, it's, it's mesmerizing. Now she's gotten up and she's carried on feeding, and then if you're wondering about that sharp light, that is the light from one of, the, pardon me, from one of the vehicles in this area that are illuminating her because the quality of what we see to the naked eye is pretty much incomparable. I sort of make out her contour and her general shape but with the infrared light you can just see it a million times better so this is why we use it and why other guys without the infrared light well they've got to use the spotlight to be able to to see her better she seems to be quite hungry and she's got quite a big belly so i'm sure she's eaten quite a lot and every now and again we hear the crunching of the bones Now, she's not too far away from Chitwa Dam, so if she wanted to go and have a drink there, I'm sure that would be the best spot. She's got the kill up here at the tree. 
a very good day for her. Proud cat mama, you're wondering how many teeth do leopards have? Well, I would guess that probably the same amount of lion, uh, the same amount as lion, so my guess is going to be 32. However, I'm not 100% sure, but I, if I had to guess, I would put it between 30 and 32. Hopefully that's correct, but I will double check once we get back and find out, and we'll let you know. Well, we had a similar question a while ago, and lions, definitely 32, so I would assume leopards are probably the same. Look at those whiskers. I love the way the whiskers look in the light. Now you see, that's what I was telling you earlier when you were wondering as how she manages to cut through the skin. That's exactly what she's doing there. Putting her head on the side and then using her molars just to cut through the skin and be able to expose the, the skin, the muscles underneath, because that's actually really what she wants to try and eat. So she manages to get some of them with her front teeth. And now you see she's just using her paws to hold down the prey while she pulls and manages to get pieces of meat. Beautiful. <laughs> Looking very regal up there. And it's such a such a stunning view of her in this tree. We decided not to move. We decided that this was probably the best view for now. Um, just because here we can see her face. Whereas I'm a bit afraid that if we move around and we start bashing around the bushes then we're just going to see her body and not her face. But we'll definitely try a new angle just a little bit better. But we thought we'd give this one a try. Seeing she actually got up and she's a bit more active and she's feeding all around. <laughs> Beautiful girl. There were rumors of her mating with, oh, I think, Tingana a while ago, so I wonder if there's anything in that possibility, or if perhaps Tingana was just distracted in between her and Tandi. I could potentially be making this up, but I, th I think I remember something along those lines not too long ago. Okay, so Lou agrees. She was definitely mating with Tingana about a week ago. Okay, good. Good to know that I'm not going crazy and making up <laughs> parallel lives for the leopards around this area. So if everything goes well, hopefully she'll have her, I believe, first litter of cubs. So here's here's to looking forward to her maybe potentially being pregnant and having tiny little ones later on. Lara, you're wondering if Kuchala could be a pregnant girl right now. Well, she's clearly done mating with Tingana, which means her Easter cycle is finished, so that is one of the possibilities. I would really much hope that she is, but I suppose we'll only find out in time, because it's very hard to tell from here, but if she's been mating, there's a very good chance that she is. Although normally when they're quite this young, it takes them a little while before they actually conceive. Oh, that's beautiful. So hopefully, although with that big fat belly that she's got full of diker, <laughs> it almost seems like she's got, she's full of little cubs. She looks very funny. She looks like a very strange ball with a head. <laughs> hmm, what a way to spend the afternoon. Our beard, you're wondering what her name means. Well, Kuchava is a word for Shangan that it's been roughly translated as scared, but it's, 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 it refers to somebody that's a bit shy slash scared. So apparently when she was little, she was quite shy and uh, she wouldn't like to be seen from vehicles all that much. And from Tristan's experience, and Tristan's another one of the presenters at Safari Live, that he actually used to guide at Chitwa many years ago. Um, that she was actually quite uh, a skittish little girl, or that's what what she was famous for. But it seems like she's grown into, into quite a relaxed one, and funny enough, even leopards that are a little bit scared of humans and of cars, they are a lot more relaxed during the night. I think it's probably because they feel like they've got the dark cover on their side. Probably feel a little bit better with that. But that's her beautiful Kuchala. And this is a brand new leopard for me too. I have never seen her before. So it's always wonderful to get to, new, to get to see new ones, but likely, if I were to see her in the daylight, I wouldn't recognize. <laughs> I wouldn't recognize her. So here's to putting it out in the universe that I would like to see her during the daytime as well. <laughs> there we go. The other vehicle has switched off their lights, and now we get a full infrared view of her.
Richie, you're wondering why she left in Ghana after mating with him. Well, leopards are not really sociable animals and a male and a female will only come together or start looking for one another just for mating purposes and while they mate, the females become um, really desperate. That's the word for a female leopard in heat. And um, they're constantly looking for the males and they want to mate and they're constantly offering themselves. But once her her cycle is done, then they pretty much just leave. And the male goes one side and then the female goes on to... and she carries on with her life. Like, they, they, they are not sociable animals. Like, for example, lions do. They want to live in prides or in leaps of leopards, as the name would have it. So the only times where you will see leopards or more than one leopard is the case of a mother and cubs and or a case of mate or a mating pair. Other than that, it's very normal to see them just on their own. So I think her Easter cycle just came to an end and she, because it normally lasts only about four or five days and if she falls pregnant or if she is pregnant right now, she'll have her cubs in about three months time and if she's not, then likely in a few weeks time she's going to start looking for another partner, probably Tingana again as he seems to enjoy this area. Who knows, maybe she'll even attract quarantine. You can hear the crunching of the bones. She's definitely feeding. <laughs> Trying to get through as much meat as she can. There we go, cutting through the skin again, that's when she tilts her head sideways, carries on. You know, it's, sometimes it's a bit hard to try and convey the sounds that, that we hear, and every now and again we hear the crunching of the bones, maybe we do again, I'll point it out once more, hopefully we'll be able to hear it, but she's not, she's not, um, she's not allowed to <laughs> chew her, <laughs> so it's hard to hear, and now she keeps <coughs> gazing in that direction, so I wonder if perhaps Perhaps there's a hyena coming around somewhere. It almost some, sounded like something was walking in the grass, but I'm not too sure. Like I said, it's very hard to see now in the dark, and I have no idea what she's looking at. But whatever it is, apparently it didn't bother her too much. Now, there's another vehicle behind us, so I, we might have to move. give these guys a chance. So just bear with me for one second. We're going to move. Let's see where we can get a bit of a different angle. There's another vehicle behind us and they will not have access to her, but I think what we're going to see now is going to be epic. Seems like Jamie is still with her lovely lions and Kuchava is all the way up here on the tree. She doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So we're going to stick around with her for a while longer, see what she gets up to. I'm sure she's going to finish devouring this carcass. But while we do that, let's go over to Jamie and see what the lions do in the darkness. Hopefully they'll be getting up to a little bit of eating themselves. Sorry guys, um, seems like we have managed to find a very good position to view her for a little while longer. And uh, what a stunning view this is. Are oh, you going to get up again and start moving? So, we can definitely tell that she's had a very good meal. I don't think she'll be complaining. And it's funny, like we were saying yesterday, we normally see the steampunk in the darker as tiny little creatures. Probably not enough to feed them, but I think for smaller leopards, or maybe not, I shouldn't say smaller, but just for females rather than males, they still represent quite a good meal. I mean. Shadow and the cub were very happy with its steambook, and judging by Kuchava's stomach size, I think this tiger has been quite a good one for her too. Oh, you're gonna drop everything now. Do not drop it. We don't want you to drop it. Although, I'm not too sure how you're gonna manage that. Luckily, it's still hyena area free. <laughs> so, even if she does drop it, or unless there's something lurking around that we haven't seen, she'll still be quite safe. But it seems like everything is just hanging there by just a little bit of the skin and she's not holding on to it so it does happen 
every so often that they drop their kills, especially when they're young and when they're still learning how to how to hoist their kills, put them up in trees, and how to handle them when they're up there. A lot of the times, they, the young ones lose them to to hyenas, and then you can see the mother's face is like, oh, no, you hear the crunching now. Beautiful face. Very long, elongated face. You can hear all the lions roaring quite in the distance. I wonder who that is. It's a very faint noise in the distance, but it seems to be going closer. So I am hoping that whoever it is, wherever they are, because they still seem to be somewhere in Malamala, yeah. um, that they'll carry on. <coughs> so that we'll be able to see them again tomorrow. Hey, maybe that's a bite. That's a bit too big for you, isn't it? Um, the roaring, it seems it was coming from Malamala side and it's still quite far from where we are and obviously the sound travels uh, far far longer distances in, in cold air so hopefully the guys those guys will carry on moving and they'll carry on moving onto the side that wherever it is that we can find them tomorrow and hopefully Kachaba will also be here tomorrow I just want them all around <laughs> I don't think anyone can blame me for that you're wondering who do I believe would make the cutest little leopard cubs um, <laughs> I don't know that's actually a very hard question because I just love everything that's tiny and it's got spots so the smaller the cuter and my heart just goes all warm and fuzzy inside so <laughs> I'm not too sure how to answer that mm, I'm not sure ah that's a good combination <laughs> Sorry guys, the girls in FC have quite the imagination, so according to Lou and Megan in FC, Tamba and Shungile would make very pretty cubs, but Rebecca all the way in the Mara disagrees because they're all still underage. <laughs> Mama Bex always <laughs> looking after her children. But I agree with Megan and Lou, I reckon those could be very pretty. Maybe Tiani and Hosanna could make really pretty cubs too. Because Tiani's got that something to her and hmm, I think that would be an interesting combination too. I like I like that one. And then, who knows? I think, yeah. I just like them all. That's the problem. When they're tiny and fluffy, they're just so pretty. But yeah, I would say Hosanna and Tiani, Tamba and Shungile, eventually. So that Rebecca doesn't get all <laughs> alarmed. <laughs> and then, hmm, I, would, I don't know, I reckon a combination of Shadow or Tundi with Mr. Anderson could produce some very interesting looking offspring. Well guys, it's starting to become that time of the day again where we start saying our goodbyes and bid everyone farewell and thanking you all for accompanying us on this beautiful safari. I think we've been extremely lucky today. It's been for sure a day to remember that is Senzo trying to turn everything off so that he doesn't blind me. <laughs> now maybe I feel like the Impala do. <laughs> <laughs> when we shine the lights at them by mistake. So, I'm pretty sure we'll see everyone tomorrow. And tomorrow, the first hour and a half is Juma and Mara will be joining us tomorrow morning a little bit later on. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Tristan is going to be taking you on the morning safari. But we'll, we'll see about it tomorrow. But let's spend our very last minutes just looking at that beautiful Kuchava and just enjoying the very, the, very, the very blessing that it is to spend some time with a very relaxed leopard while it feeds on its kill. I'm gonna have one last look at her. And I don't think we could have, I could have asked for a better introduction to this beautiful leopard. Definitely a good dinner. Goodbye everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow and thank you for joining.